Welcome to iLecture Online and now we're going to show you an example of how to use the differential form of Ampere's law in a situation where we want to find the B field outside the region where the current density is occurring, where the current is flowing. So how we do that? Well we imagine that the same amount of current that we had before in this uh, skinnier region right here is now spread over a wider region because we want to find the B field right at this point right there. What is the B field right over here? Of course, it goes around in a circular fashion, right? So it's a, it's a function of theta. So again, we want to find the B field here at this region. B field is equal to question mark, is equal to question mark. That's what we're trying to find out. So we're going to simulate as if the same current is spread over a wider region. And then we're going to find the, uh, the uh, B field inside this region all the way out to the edge of that region using this equation rather than this, oh, where's the equation I would not want to use? Hmm, I didn't write it down, so let me write it down. So normally, outside the region, we know that the B field is equal to mu sub naught times I divided by 2 pi times the radius. So this is the equation you find by using the integral form of the B, of the, um, of Ampere's law. Now we want to use the differential form, so we want to take the curl. But to do that, we're going to use the inside form of the equation. In other words, the equation as it's valid where the current is happening, and since there's no current out there, we're simply going to simulate as if the current is always spread out to this point right here. And at the very edge right there, the two equations should converge, and that allows you to use the differential form of Ampere's law and allows you to find the curl. So, we know now that this is the equation of the B field inside this current region right there, all the way from the center, all the way out to the very edge. And of course, this now is uh, A1, which is two times A sub naught. So we want to find it at a distance that's twice the radius of this inside region where the current is happening. So the equation then becomes mu sub naught I times R divided by 2 pi A sub 1 squared. And since A sub 1 is twice A sub 0, this then becomes mu sub naught I R over 8 pi a sub naught squared because 2 squared is 4 and 4 times 2 is 8, right here. And of course then we're going to simulate, not simulate, but we're going to make the equation easier to read by simply taking this portion of the equation, call it a constant, and multiply times r. So c is simply mu sub naught i divided by a pi a sub naught squared. Now we can use that in the curl equation and then we can show you how that how this form actually works. So this is the what we call the curl of a vector b. In this case, vector b represents the magnetic field in cylindrical coordinates. And then, of course, the b field in the r direction, the radial outward direction, is zero because there's no b field out in this direction. It's only along the curl here, the curve of this uh, circle. So it's zero in the radial direction. It's zero in the z direction. There's no b field going directly up. There's only b field going around the circle. And so that has to then, uh, this, this then CR came from this right here, CR, which represents the B field inside the current region. And we have to multiply times R, this comes from the equation, so we end up with CR squared. If we now take the curl of this, we get the following. So we take 1 over R times the unit vector in the R direction times the partial derivative of theta uh, of B sub Z, so the partial with respect to theta of b sub z. Oh, uh, instead of b sub z, I might as well write what b sub z is. Makes it easier, because I already have it there. So here we take this times the partial of 0 minus the partial with respect to z of this quantity right here. So the partial with respect to z of cr squared. Now, of course, since we take the derivative with respect to z, anything that's not a z is a constant. So here we're taking the partial derivative of a constant, which means it will be 0. Okay, minus, because we alternate signs, plus, minus, plus, minus theta hat, that means the unit vector in the theta direction, times the partial with respect to r of 0, the partial with respect to r of 0, minus the partial with respect to z of 0. So what you do here, since you're taking this unit vector, you cross out this column, you cross out this row, you're left with these four elements, and this times this minus this times this. That's how you get that. And finally, plus 1 over r times the z unit vector times, so now we use this right here, and then you cross out this column and this row, you take these four elements, so it's this times this minus this times this. Actually, it's not a multiplication, you're actually taking the partial derivative, so it's the partial with respect to r of cr squared minus and then we take the partial with respect to theta 
of zero. Now you realize when you do this that every term except one becomes zero. So the partial of zero is zero, the partial of a constant is zero, the partial of zero is zero, the partial of zero is zero, and here the partial of zero is zero. The only term that survives is this term right here. That's the only surviving term. Good, not with the negative sign there, all right? And if you take the partial derivative with respect to r of c r squared, you'll get 2c times r. So this then becomes uh, 1 over r times z unit vector times the derivative of that, which is 2cr, 2cr, like that. And of course, then when you multiply that, you get 1 over r times r, the r's cancel out, and you get 2c times the z unit vector. Yep, okay. For a moment there, I go, wait a minute, z unit vector, is it wrong? No, no, because the current density is in the z direction, so we know that when we take the curl here, we should equal, we should equal the uh, mu sub dot, which is the uh, permeability of free space, times the current density in the z direction. So it looks like so far, we're on the track of getting the right answer. All right, now we need to plug in what c is equal to, which we have over here. c is equal to this quantity right there. So we can say that this is equal to 2 times c, which is mu sub naught, times i divided by 8 pi a sub naught squared. And of course, 2 divided by 8 is 1 fourth, so this is equal to mu sub naught i divided by 4 pi a sub naught squared. And then if we um, break that out, we can say this is equal to 1 half times mu sub naught i divided by uh, 2 pi a sub naught squared. So the reason why I wrote it like that is because this portion right here, and of course I keep forgetting my z unit vector, I don't want to do that, my z unit vector, there we go, my z unit vector, there we go. And the reason why I wrote, wrote it like this is because this portion right here is equal to the B field at the edge of the current region right there. So if I find the B field right there, I would get this result right here. But since I now want to find the B field out here, it's only half as much. And that's why I wrote all the hat so you can see it. At first we would think that we got the wrong answer because here we have an a sub naught squared and there we have a 1 over r. And so you say, well, hmm, what's going on? But then we have to make one more differential. This equation was obtained by using the integral form of of Ampere's law, and we're using the dif differential form, and the curl is equal to mu sub naught times the current density, not mu sub naught times i, i enclosed. So what we're going to do is, and I have it here somewhere, right here, so I have a relationship between the current density and the current itself, all right? And so i sub naught divided by pi a1 squared, um, we don't have an a1, so we have an a0, so we can write it like this. So we can say that, mm, let me go over here. So the current density j sub naught is equal to i sub naught divided by 4, not 4 because it's the area, it's equal to pi a sub naught squared. All right, so it's equal to the current divided by the area through which it goes. And we can also say that j sub 1 is equal to i sub 1 which is the same as i sub zero, divided by pi a sub one squared, which is equal to i sub one, divided by four pi a sub zero squared. So what I can do is I can say, well, I have one over four pi a sub zero squared times i, and i one and i zero is the same thing. So this portion right here can be converted to j sub naught. <clears throat> or in this case, now j sub naught, because, no, j sub 1. So this is equal to j sub 1, so this is equal to z, mu sub naught times j sub 1 in the z direction. I don't need a little arrow on top in the z direction like that. Okay, so what do we have now? We tried to find the B field at this location right there. And the B field was obtained by assuming that the current was spread over the entire region right there, so I have a new current density, j sub 1 here, which is 1 quarter j sub 0, which is equal to 1 over 4 pi a sub naught squared, because pi a sub naught squared is j sub 0, and 1 over 4 pi a sub naught squared is j sub 1. So if I replace that by j sub 1, I now showed you that the curl of the B field 
at this location right here, twice the original radius of where my current is flowing, this will be equal to mu sub naught times j sub 1, which is the current density spread over the entire region. And that's why you can, you can take the curl of the B field if you make this one adjustment where you take the current inside the inner, inner, inner cylinder and spread it out evenly over the larger cylinder to find the B field at the edge of that cylinder. And that's how you do that problem.